talk about the most popular cameras, the Fujifilm X-T20 and the X-T2. We get a lot of questions on YouTube on which camera to buy. Yeah, because they're pretty much similar. They have the same sensor, same processor. And, you know, you get confused on them because they look similar, though I, I do have the silver and black version. I have the all black version. But there are some subtle differences and it's really up to you to decide which camera you want to choose. If you want to learn more about these two cameras, keep on watching. So uh, I have the Fujifilm X-T20. This camera obviously can be bought with two different kit options. You got the XC16-50 and you also have the XF18-55. I like this lens more because it's a pretty fast lens at an f2.8. At the full uh, wide open aperture, even at zoom, it's still an f4 which is really good to you know, uh, create a lot of shallow depth of field. Uh, so this is what I'm going to be shooting with today. I got the jacket on because today is kind of on and off. I'm not sure if it's going to rain. It did rain slightly earlier when we did our little intro. Um, but uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be shooting with this and uh, just kind of giving you my opinion. So I'm shooting with the X-T20 uh, in aperture priority mode. So the shutter speed's on A. Uh, the lens aperture setting is on manual, which allows me to adjust the depth of field. And the camera just figures out the shutter speed. It's so much easier for me to shoot that way. I also set the, the ISO to automatic and uh, set it up to even up to uh, 6400 ISO and it would decide what's the best uh, ISO based on you know the lighting situation of course I would try to keep it as low as possible and then shooting in that mode I just use the exposure comp dial to uh, over or under compensate the scene depending on on what I like to see so the great thing I like about this of course is that it's so small and compact um, it does have this nice tilt LCD screen so when I'm shooting down low you know I don't necessarily have to get right to the ground and it's quite useful for doing some uh, some shots, um, you know, of things on the ground, whether it's plants, animals, bugs, things like that. And, you know, of course, if I have younger kids and it's easier, you know, I don't have to actually scoot down onto the ground just to get a nice low angle shot. Um, it also has a touch screen, which I like, that allows me to move the autofocus point to where I want it. Um, and, you know, that comes in quite handily uh, with this camera. Now, I do have my jacket on, like I said, because it was kind of on and off today about the rain. Um, I guess the only thing about this X-T20 is that it's not weather resistant. Uh, even if you buy a weather resistant lens, the camera itself is not weather resistant. So you do have to be careful. Now, for myself, it's not a big deal because when I'm typically shooting, if it's really downpouring today uh, or any other day, you know, I don't really want to be in the rain. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, not my thing. And if if it did, you know, drizzle a little bit, I'm not that concerned most of the time. But you do have to be careful, especially on the top of the camera. So it's drizzling a little bit, so I'm just kind of ducking under a tree right now. Uh, the camera's not really waterproof, so I don't want to obviously damage the camera. It's not really mine. It's one of the uh, Fuji loners that I get, uh, and I do get them off, which is nice. But Francis over there is uh, not having any of this. What? Not made of chocolate? And the great thing about small cameras is that, you know, you have more chances of getting more shots because, you know, you don't feel like you're stuck, you know, thinking about, man, I'm going to lug this big camera around with me. Uh, where with this, you know, it does fit in a small little pouch that I have right here. It uh, makes it easier to, uh, you know, carry on because I hate carrying stuff, to be honest with you. And I have actually three lenses in here as well as a share printer, which, uh, you know, it's not very uh, heavy at all. So, again, I like using the EVF. Some people, uh, you know, are not comfortable with it. Like my wife, she generally is not uh, comfortable using her eyes for that. You have the LCD screen, of course, and it is tilting, but, you know, personally for me, I have to have a camera that has an electronic viewfinder because, you know, it's just easier to see and to frame the shot. And because it's a mirrorless camera, when I adjust, you know, the aperture or the shutter speed, I know exactly what the exposure is going to be like. I also turn on the uh, horizon level on my camera, so in the display menu I turn it on just 
so that my pictures are not tilted and that's one of the things I hate doing in post editing um, is just you know correcting all the tilt uh, on the shots especially when you got sort of a, a water like this where it looks kind of weird if the water is kind of pouring down on you in that direction. Um, the XT20 has a mode dial on the left here to shoot some different shooting modes. You got the high speed mode, you got some bracketing modes. It's quite convenient. Uh, personally, I would like to have an ISO dial. I think that's the one thing that's lacking, and unfortunately, with the XT20, the ISO settings uh, have to be done in the menu itself. Um, saying that, of course, I do shoot a lot of auto ISO, and there is three auto ISO custom settings that you can set it up. So it generally may be not a big issue at all. So even though it's so small, you know, the XT20 also offers 4K video, which again, I'm not losing out, although it is a half line skip, meaning that uh, I'm not getting the full resolution of 4K. But one of the advantages of, of half line skip is that I have no crop. So whatever I see in the screen, you know, I'm getting that in, in 4K as well. I can switch the dial here to the video mode. It gives me the, uh, the top crops and bottom, uh, 16 by 9. And the video quality actually is quite high. Here's just a, a quick little video that I'm filming. And I'm, I'm actually using uh, the film simulation modes, Velvia, uh, to film my shots. Now, if you don't like using the EVF, um, you can also use the LCD as well to film. Uh, what's great about the LCD, of course, is that you can just tilt it. And uh, it makes it easier to kind of fold if uh, you want to do that. Again, you've got 4K options at 29.9 frames per second. Uh, it is limited though compared to the XT2, but hey, I'm not going to be filming over 10 minutes of 4K video. I generally do, uh, you know, short low clips. So say I'm filming my kids, I'm generally just filming for maybe 30 seconds and then I stop. I don't try to move the camera around too much because I know when I do edit the video later on, I can just clip them together as mini clips and it really makes a much better video. I've seen a lot of people when they do video kind of walk around and they're trying to show things like this. And, uh, you know, it gets pretty dizzy, right? And so, to me, the limitations of, you know, the 10 minutes is, is not, it's not that bad for me at all. It does also uh, allow you to use continuous autofocusing. What's great with the touch screen for video is that I actually can tap the screen and I can move the focus point. And, and of course, wherever the focus point is, if I have it set to the autofocus, the continuous autofocus, the, uh, the, the, the focusing will obviously adjust. And that's kind of what I like about the touch screen which to me actually is a great feature for video. All right, so my personal favorite is the X-T2 for a couple of reasons, but first off, I, I have the tilty, tilting screen just like the X-T20, but the X-T2 has this way, uh, which the X-T20 doesn't. And it's quite useful for situations like this where you want to use the LCD and then frame on the portrait orientation, but still use the uh, LCD screen. And even if I want to go down low, I can just go and that, I got the shot. So that's one advantage of the X-T2 over the X-T20 is that additional rotating onto the side. So I'm shooting Acros now. Uh, I have my own recipe because I like to shoot JPEGs. So I go into the quick menu and I actually add uh, plus two on the shadow tones and on the highlight tones, which makes it a little more contrasty and a little bit more dramatic And I personally really like the Acros plus the red filter whether the sky is blue or not I just feel like it's the best filters for me and if I want to shoot color uh, Actually, I use Astia and I remove minus two of uh, color and still keep the plus two plus two on the shadow and highlight tones That's just my personal favorite so both the X-T2 and the X-T20 share the same sensor and processor, which means they both have 325 focusing points. But the difference between the two is that, yes, the X-T20 has the touch screen, but personally I find to pinpoint my focus point and choose it, I like the joystick better. I think it's faster, it's more accurate for me. So if I go in there and I really want to pinpoint um, my uh, my focus point, I can size it down and actually just move it with the joystick and then snap my shot and have it right where I want it. And I do not need to focus and recompose. I can really pinpoint uh, the focus area that I want and have it perfect focus. And this is good when you know you have a uh, um, wide aperture lens, like a 1.2 for example, then you're really close to your subject. You don't want to focus and recompose because then you can lose your focus on there so 
325 points and the joystick to me that's the best so the xt2 it has a lot to offer over the xt20 matter of fact uh, take for example the viewfinder it's so much bigger uh, you got a lot of resolution a refresh rate that's amazing and it's just amazing uh, it's 0.77 magnification which is huge and it's so crisp and clear like it's huge it's amazing and that makes a big difference to me uh, moving on I would say that the weather sealing and the built construction is also amazing you have a magnesium alloy body and weather resistant uh, body as well uh, the only thing to consider is that when you buy it as a kit with the 1855 the body is sealed but the lens is not so be careful with that but if you pair it for example with the uh, one of our trio f2 lenses uh, 23 35 or 50 uh, then you have a completely sealed setup so when it starts raining out of the blue then you're fine you can keep shooting and that's something I personally really like is when for example I'm shooting weddings I, I, I can tell my clients it doesn't matter if it rains don't worry about it we'll just make the best out of it use the rain get all wet take amazing shots and not worry about my gear one second so this is a big part uh, for the for the X-T2 for me sure the X-T20 gives you dials which is amazing and it's great but the X-T2 offers a, a lot more dials for example just the ISO dials that's been here I, I have the shutter speed and the aperture so I can just look down and I see my exposure triangle right away also another good point is that I can actually lock my dials without accidentally uh, changing the, the shutter speed or the ISO which is something important to me I personally like to shoot in aperture priority so I just lock it on a and I never have to worry about my shutter speed I just need to, to focus on uh, my aperture ring make sure my aperture is right lock in the ISO dial and I'm good to go one other thing uh, that's really cool about the X-T2 is its expandability so you can add a booster grip underneath it which the X-T20 can't really you can only add the metal grip um, also when you put the, the booster grip you get access to your uh, headphone jacks and uh, which leads me to talk about the 3.5 millimeter input so it's a standardized mic input so no adapters needed and speaking of video uh, just like the X-T20 with the X-T2 you can shoot 4k video at 29.97 frames per second uh, but unlike the X-T20 you get a full sensor readout so what that means is more information but also a crop factor of 1.17 with that being it's not that bad uh, compared to whatever is out there for crop for 4k but all that to say you get more quality out of it for your video also you have your HDMI output onto the side which you can use an external recorder and record 4k uncompressed footage F-Log so a whole lot more possibilities with the X-T2 for 4K videos. You know, if you shoot professionally, you need the features that the X-T2 gives you, like the dual card slot when you want a backup, or if you shoot, like I shoot, uh, RAW plus JPEG. Yeah. I want JPEGs on one card and RAW as a backup because I want to use the JPEGs because they're so good. And, and, and you know, the weather sealing, being prepared anytime it starts raining it doesn't matter you're yeah, good to go that's true I yeah. mean the, the weather thing I think it's important for some people that you know have to shoot in all conditions you know if you're a hiker and traveler uh, especially but, for moisture and humidity yeah. I think the XG2 would excel in I don't do that as often and you know this is my everyday camera I think you know so if maybe you, as a professional it might not be my choice I think it's a good but, backup uh, though. it could be a good backup for sure for the size but, uh, but you know, like if you I had said, to pick the XT2 for me still because XT20. of the size. It's <laughs> XT20, yeah. sorry, because of the size. So Francis, the great thing about the uh, XT20 is, again, the small size. I love it. I got the new uh, XF 50 mm f2 lens. It's a perfect fit. Um, I've also even added the uh, hand grip. Gives a little bit of uh, a better grip to it, and it adds, of course, uh, the the Arca Swift attachment on. If you have a, a tripod that accepts that, on and off really quickly. Gives you access to the uh, the battery doors as well, which is nice. Uh, but you know the XT20 it is small and it probably works better with small lenses like our F2 lenses uh, you got the XT2 it's like a perfect mesh yeah for, uh, you know 
D5140 would fit on the XT20. But sure, It's absolutely. sort of been unbalanced. So when you look at the XT2 like this, this is like, it's really a professional setup, but it's also, it, it feels nice, you know, like it's well balanced when you had the, when you had the grip on it, and then I can just go and then go crazy like this. Uh, so if you want to shoot sports and stuff like that, uh, it might be better looking at something like, like this. That doesn't mean though that you can't shoot with the sure. XT20. Sure, I mean I could, I could stick even the XF100-400 lens on yeah. this. It just looks a little bit weird because you know I'm holding most of the lens and the camera's really just floating behind. And, yeah. and maybe if I'm buying this camera, I'm not that person that you know would consider buying an XF100-400 uh, yeah. or even a 50-140 to for that matter. Uh, although it's not to say that I couldn't use one. And, and that's and, the beauty of and, the Fujifilm system, yes. is that everything fits. And it, you know, if, if I were to buy an X-T2 like this kit, and I wanted a backup for if anything happens, I can have an X-T20, which is almost yeah. half the price. <laughs> and, and if this for some reason fails, I have this as a backup and everything fits. Hey, I'm, no su problem. I'm supposed to kind of win you over for the X-T20. It looks like you you won, well, won over from that. No, but to be honest, I love <laughs> both cameras, but we need to be fair, yeah. right? So there's advantages on this. There's advantages on this. Uh, you, know what I, you know what I wish the X-T20 had? The locking dials that your camera has, you know? So I don't actually bump the, the shutter speed or the ISO dials. That's a good point. I kind of like that. I kind of like that... Uh, you know, I'm gonna get some decent shots out of this with a single battery, uh, but you know, when I'm shooting, if I'm shooting professionally. You got that vertical yeah. grip. You got the extra two batteries, yeah. and that's gonna allow you to shoot, you know, like 900, close to 900 shots. Oh, you can at shoot. Least, you right? can shoot a whole lot. From so, a personal experience, I can shoot. I did shoot a wedding for 10 hours with three batteries. And sure, no I can problem. carry two batteries with me and, and swap them when I need it. But again, if I'm shooting convenient. professionally, you know, I don't have time to tell the bride, hey, stop. I gotta switch my batteries up, you know, you, you kind of can go shoot through that scene and, and not worry about the, the batteries draining, of course. Absolutely. So those are, you know, some good valid points between the two cameras, but yeah, the great thing about X-Series is that they're interchangeable from, you know, the, the lenses, some of the accessories as well uh, that can be interchanged. Yeah. Again, I like uh, the camera itself. This is the grip though. It's kind of nice if you want to have that extra... Uh, you know, hold to it. I personally don't need one of these, uh, but it's out there for you to uh, to buy if you think the camera's still too small, but you want a small camera, but you like mm, like to have just a, a slightly better grip. Yeah, Billy, you should go get shelter to start in the rain, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Francis, take a look at the shot. Very nice. Let, let me just double tap on it. Ooh. Yeah, I focused on the front there. So wow. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna give that to you. If that's cool. Yeah, just print it on the on the printer. Okay. Uh, I already set it up, so it's uh, quick. Pretty simple. I love the share printer. I know, I, I know you love it too. I love it for weddings and everything. Well, it fits in a lot of situations. It's just a great tool to give a physical print yeah. to people yeah. because that's something that's going away somehow, and then you can quickly just send it and have a a physical print. I always, cool. uh, you know, go to parties and take pictures of people, and I end up keeping all the pictures for myself. People are always so. surprised. Like they yeah. see it and they see it appear. I know what I do with kids. I make them blow on it and then it appears. <laughs> they're just they're just like it's magic. So that's that's a cool thing to do also. So that's pretty simple. Both of cameras have it. They both have Wi-Fi. You know, even we have the remote app as well. So it's really, you know, you're not really losing if you're going with the X-T20 uh, versus the yeah, X-T2. I think both of those it. features are, are cool to have and, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, whether you're paying, you know, 1800 plus or you're paying, you know, under that, yep. you know, you got similar features, features still and uh, yeah. you know it makes both of these cameras worthwhile so. so that's a wrap for today we shot both of the X-T20 and the X-T2 I know you like some of the great features the X-T2 had yeah I really love the weather sealing the belt quality and the more advanced uh, features on it but the X-T20 is still a good choice why did you like it more well I like it because you know being a mirrorless camera it's very compact and very small so yeah. I can take it around with me everywhere I go and I know the best camera is camera you have with you so the Absolutely. smaller for me it's always the better I love the touchscreen controls on this it does still have 4k video just like the XC2 although it does have line skipping so still great, not though. as good but still good uh, there's some there's some things about this camera that I wish I had you know the ISO dial that's found on the XT2 I hope you guys enjoyed this video kind of talking about some of the feature points on both cameras again my personal pick XT20 and I picked the XT2 now, guys, you want to learn about this and other Fujifilm products, again, 
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Until then, I'm Billy. And I'm Francis. For the and Fuji we're Fuji Guys. guys.